it took me a while to get this right. Hello, everybody. This is the Morning Garden Show, and I am doing great, and I hope that everyone on your behalf and family is doing great, because uh, I am still excited and pumped for spring, and it only happens in another three months. And I'm telling you, it is incredible getting ready to absolutely do what I got to do for this garden. I have everything I need. I have all my supplies. I am going to take a trip to Home Depot today because I, I keep saying I'm looking for a lawn mower, self propelled something that they had like last year's model. I'll take that. Uh, I don't care if it was last year's model. I just want something that's new. Uh, as far as the use wise, never been used. And I want something that is, is front wheel drive or self propelled. And I want the bag option on the back. That, that's that's one of my two things bag option on the back. And also, I like to have everything uh, so that I can collect my grass clippings. Grass clippings, as I said earlier, most of my videos that I've talked about is fertilizer. And I use the mulch around my vegetable plant. I use it to mulch around my trees and also my, my fruit bushes. And that's what I do. Um, so that's where I'm at. And oh, thank you for the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I am definitely uh, going to go into the yard again. I did a video uh, earlier this week uh, uh, just showing some of what my garden uh, is, is, is doing at this moment. But um, I saw a lot of uh, dead plants, weeds, and that sort of thing everywhere. Everywhere. So that being said, I've always said to everyone that uh, that's fertilized. That's how nature does it. It fertilizes in the fall and winter by knocking everything down. And it hits the ground. It sits there. It rots. It, it, it becomes food for the uh, ground, and it goes back into the earth. It's a wonderful system, and I don't intend to try to change it. However, I'd like for a number of you to get into that trend of doing it the same way nature's doing it. Uh, instead of fertilizing everything in the spring and summer, you might as well fertilize now in the winter. Get everything done. If you get a hold of some wood chips, if you can get a hold of... Um, uh, Lordy God, hey, what's going on? Lead Farmer 73. I didn't think anyone was up this early. Um, but I'm about I'm up doing the gardening thing. I got uh, I'm looking over at some plants now, some pepper plants that are growing indoors. Um, also, there's some garlic plants that I pulled from the refrigerator and I started growing those just for fun. I, the garlic I'm growing for fun, but you know it, as it gets closer towards spring and everything, um, I will. I have garlic planted outside as well in containers. So I'm doing good. Now this year, uh, I've been telling people a lot about using fish as a fertilizer, which is, uh, you know, they give it away at the uh, fish markets, the big fish markets, um, uh, where you could go there and you could drop the brother or the sister some uh, tip, you know, drop my tip and say, look, could you fill up your two five gallon buckets, you know, with fish heads and some guts if you have them, but mostly fish heads, no big deal. And they'll do that. They'll do that because all that goes uh, into recycling for uh, waste material, basically. So that's what I do. I, I, I like to uh, use what, uh, what you have around you and items that are free. And those free items are definitely worth, you know, you know considering and using. Uh, there is a, a fertilizer that, her, that has more of the nutrients that your plants need and that's fish that's fish uh most of us are uh, using uh fertilizer that we buy from the stores and they claim that we have uh living biology in these bags and they say that um they um they contain um nitrogen phosphorus and potassium uh and okay that's all well and fine but fish carries more nutrients than, than what you can buy in any uh bag at any big box store, any bag, you know. So I'm just telling everybody, you know, if it's a fee resource, go ahead and get it and use it. Because you're going to see me using it this year, uh, the fish. Fish is, uh, well, I'll put it this way. 
Um, I have a big grocery store a few miles from me. And all I got to do is get uh, a few buckets from a Home Depot with the lid on it. Tell the brother to fill them up with fish guts and fish hands. So that don't be guts, but just basically the fish parts. Fill it up. I'll take it to the car, drop my tip, and I'll take it home, dig my hole, put the fish down in there, cover them over about two inches, be about two inches over, and then put a little bit of lime down there on top of that, and then go ahead, cover it over, put that plant right on top, plant on top, and gently tamp it down and watch the plant go crazy. Watch it go crazy. Watch it. I, I like doing that. I, I, I really like doing that. When you take the food, put it in that one location. That way you're not feeding all the weeds. You're not feeding other plants that you don't mean to feed. Because some people, I guess they still are sprinkling fertilizer all over the ground everywhere and then putting in plants. So I don't do that. One central location where my plants growing. That's where I want the food at. And uh, once I put that food down in about a week and a half, two weeks, your plants' roots go down and they tap right into those that food supply. And then you see them go crazy. Big tomatoes, big cucumbers, big big squash, uh, watermelon, cantaloupe, growing sweet, big, and, and firm. Oh, my goodness. It's exciting, folks. Let me just think about that for a minute. Let me think about that because that, that, that is the stuff there. When you do that. And then when you look at what you spent in your garden and your neighbor, he or she is over there and they grow little cucumbers and they grow small uh, tomatoes and, and yours are big and burly. And they're looking and say, what did you use in your garden? And, you know, it's up to you to tell them, I, you know, me, I, I tell them, I just don't mind, you know. But uh, when, when, those, when you see that, those plants react to that, you will ask yourself a question. Why haven't I been using fish all these years? Why? I didn't know. The books didn't say go to, to the uh, to the fish market and get some fish heads and put them in the ground. And, and when you put them in the ground, you got the, the bones that are in the fish's head. That's calcium and all that stuff. I mean, come on. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Somebody's feeling me here. I love that. Um, but here's what's going on. We have a lot of gardeners out there that need the information. And it's a beautiful thing that we all share. We all share the information and just do well. I love it. I love it. It's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. If you have time to garden this year, and a lot of us, because uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Lee Farmer, 73, uh, you know, he's a working man, and, and, and of course, those, uh, some of you others are working uh, for your families and all. Those, uh, you got to figure out a way to do your, your garden where you can work and you can also still have a garden. Because I uh, got a lot of overtime this year and had to, to neglect uh, my garden a great deal. Uh, so it is a possibility, you know, that could happen. But if it does happen, there are ways that you can do things that will, will allow you to have a garden. Now, if you're using wood chips, you won't have any issues with water in your garden. That's a plus. You won't necessarily have um, any problem with fertilizing your garden because the wood chips will do that two-part thing there. They'll feed and water your plants right while they're there. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Those wood chips are free. They're free. Yep, that's how it is, folks. Definitely. Think about it. Hmm. Beautiful tomatoes, firm, sweet. You got your grill going. You know what I mean? You got your grill going, you're feeling good. And I'm thinking, wow, this is really great. This is really, this is how life is supposed to be, so they have much food as you want. Now, uh, the news that we've been having over the last few weeks has been the problem that they have with the lettuce in California 
um, and that is such a uh, shame. Uh, but uh, food food supplies are not uh, necessarily safe all the time, and sometimes people die or people get sick, and it's coming in mass. You know, food mass. It's just they're just feeding us. They don't. You know, it's like it's like a demand. It's, it's just ongoing. You know, they they're pumping that food out. It's coming from all over the world. Uh, a lot of companies, uh, countries, excuse me, don't buy food from the U.S. because of the way we grow our food. And it is not necessarily a healthy thing if you're using a whole bunch of, uh, you know, chemicals on your food and you don't want to keep doing that because it's not very healthy for you. I'm feeling good, folks. I'm feeling good because I, 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 I got some things done today that I've meant to, you know, been doing for a long time. I got some things done and I'm going to continue because um, I'm going to stop my garden early this year in February, to be quite frankly honest with you. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. This this brother is 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 he come at you straight. That's what I like. He come at you, you know, with the with the true word. But the thing about it is that I'm going to continue to put this message out there. I'm going to continue to do it because I, I sometimes what I'm getting is I get people that contact me later or sometimes they contact me right here and those people they tell me i like your idea about the, the using the fish or i like your idea about um of making your own liquid compost uh tea uh which uh like i said i use grass clippings and i use a weed that's what i do and i make 32 gallons of it all rainwater and weeds, and I'm going to tell you something, it feels good when you're ahead of the game and your money is still in your pocket and you got all these big cucumbers, all these big tomatoes, and your money is still in your pocket. That feels so good because I was one of those gardeners that used to take all my money and I would look at it and go, okay, I need to get this, 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 this for, from the uh, big box stores. I was that guy. I did it, and I thought that that's the only way you could have a big, beautiful garden was to, uh, to, to, to spend your money up. And then I started noticing another little trend: the seeds, the the supplies, the fertilizer. Everything started going through the roof. It just kept going up and up and up. Now this year is going to do exact just just count on it to do exactly the same thing, to go up, and that's what's going to happen. The, the price is going to keep moving upward, but you can find ways. To, to lower your cost. Now, I did tell you that I don't use water from my city to water anything in my garden. All that I use for the last four years has been from the rain. And all it is is two 55-gallon uh, blue uh, uh, drums. And I use a manifold system that all I did was uh, find the right fitting screwed everything together because you don't have to drill holes all through those uh, uh, those those 55 gallon tanks. Uh, I think I drilled uh, one hole and that was just to, to connect it into the, um, the gutter uh, downspout. And I used a uh, gutter, uh, well, I use a collection that's like a valve. Once it uh, fills your drums up, it cuts off from the drums and then goes back out the normal way. And when I did that, I was oh, I was ahead of the game right there. Then the next thing I did, because I used to carry water uh, back and forth to the garden, after I would go and cut the ball valve on, which is a PVC a ball valve. I would cut that on, and I would fill up the buckets, and I would take them out and water the garden. I said, this is getting old. It's hot out here, and I'm not getting any younger. So what I did is I took the uh, – connected a hose to it, uh, ran it into a on-demand pump called Shore Flow. It's a hundred p a hundred pounds p well hundred psi pump Shore Flow. It's a battery-operated twelve volt pump. They sell them all over um, eBay or or what's the other place called uh, Amazon. So that's what I did. About a hundred bucks. Then I said, Wow, that's quite a bit of money for a pump. But I said I'm going to get it anyway. 
I got the pump, I put the pump uh, in, in I connected it in, and once I did that, I cut it on one day, and I just had to shoot a video because the water was coming through a 100 foot hose, quality hose. Don't buy the cheap hoses because they tend to kink and, and bend, whatever. So what I did was I I um, went to Wal I think it was Walmart no Home Depot and I got a, a hundred foot hose I didn't want a fifty foot hose I want a hundred and I opened it up and the water shot all the way across the yard and I said that's what I want and um, when you let go of the trigger um, the pump cuts it off once it reaches a sixty pound psi within the pump it shuts it off and when you open it back up it comes right back out so a uh, hundred gallons of water. And I was watering my garden, my trees, my grass. I was washing my car. Uh, it was crazy. And then the, the, the pump, excuse me, the battery that I used was a used deep cycle battery. I could have got a new one for $100, but the guy was selling one for $25. And I, I took my, um, my battery tester out there. It's what it's called Smart Tester. And it said the battery was good. And I said, I'll buy it. And I bought it from him. And I've had the battery now for two two years, something like that, going on three. So at any rate, saving money, saving money. Now, if you don't like the drums the way they look in front of your house, if they're blue or uh, uh, whatever, you can paint them, those drums white, so they'll blend in with your, um, your house. You can paint them. And the thing about it, um, I mean, Oh my goodness, my water bill from the house stayed the same. I was not out there putting out 50 and 60 gallons of water a week and paying for it. It came from this, the, uh, the rain. And once the, I, the lowest I ever got those, those tanks down was about halfway. And then it would rain after another, let's say two weeks, it would rain. And once it rained, it would fill them all right back up within about a half an hour of rain. It, it, I mean, that's where you want to go. And you can make them bigger than that. You can make them 1,000 gallons if you want to, but, you know, you, you probably don't have a farm to be doing that. But I got, I have 25 fruit trees. I have about uh, 40 uh, uh, fruit bushes. Oops, yeah, fruit bushes. I have uh, grapevines, um, things like that. And I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just doing it because I got tired of going to the grocery store and go in there and have them demand what they want. They will put the bag up there and they will say, these small bag of grapes are $7, $8, $9. And I'm looking at that and saying, there's got to be a better way. And then when you eat the grapes and you get to, say, about halfway through, most of the grapes are soft and, and they're getting ready to go bad. And you realize you're eating grapes and also eating wine that's in the bottom of the bag with mold and stuff in it. I mean, come on. Um, and so I got tired of that. So once I got tired of it, I said, I got to do something about this. And I put in my own fruit trees, my plums, my peaches, my, my uh, cherries. I, I, I just did it all because I said, I'm tired of this. And, and when you get tired of something, you, you do something about it. And it made me do something about it to be, uh, instead of just pissed off, uh, to actually have a solution for what the problem. The, problem, the solution was uh, go online. Figure out the cost of the trees, find a reputable dealer that will back the trees and also sell your quality tree. I have a video up that I went out into my yard, uh, I think it was today, yesterday. And I just went through there and looked at all of the trees I put in there, which was, when I put them in there, they were, they were about this thick. They were, they were like $10 trees. $10 trees. They're about that big. And I was, I was ticked when I got them. I said, this is it? I said, they wanted $10 for this? And, and now that tree is, that tree that big around now, and they, and they dwarf. The trunk is that big around, and so that's 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 how you do it. Now now I'm shopping at another place called um, it's it's called uh, Stock Bros, and I like them. I like Stock Bros uh, because they, but they claim that they're knowledgeable and they're stand by you. The only thing they I I found out about them over the years of working with them is that. If something goes wrong with that tree, they'll send you a number. They won't be on the phone fighting with you over uh, whether or not they're going to exchange it. They're going to send you another tree. And within three days, that tree will be right back in there. A brand new tree will be in your possession. That's how they do business. That's how they keep business. Um, but when you call them up and you ask them about a, a question, 
they'll switch you to an expert, but the expert at, at someone like, uh, say, your level, uh, lead farmer, your level, they won't know any more than you know. They'll be at that same level. And, and you'll say to yourself when you're talking to her or him, you say, yeah, I already knew that, but I just thought maybe somebody might know something I didn't know when I called. But they're at that same level. Because you, when you want to speak to an absolute expert, then you, that's, that's a farmer. That's a farmer when you when you call a guy that's been growing cheese, think he's been growing cheese for thirty years. Uh, and, and, you know, as production wise, he's been growing food, uh, which are apples for thirty years, and he can tell you some things about apple trees that people at um, stock grows cannot tell you, because that's what he does. Well, this is the morning garden. I want to thank you, Mr. Lead Farmer seventy three, for staying tuned. I'm gonna. Uh, put this video up and uh, try to get maybe maybe a couple more hours of sleep before I get up and go to work today. But it's been real. Thank you very much, brother. You take care. Baby, baby, baby.